Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you are, welcome. Welcome to the uh, the pre-departure session organized by UQ and University of Queensland. Uh, my name is James. I'm one of the student advisors here at Student Services team. It is a privilege to, um, to work together with my colleague to wel welcome you to the session today. So today I have uh, my colleague Andrew, Michelle, Angela, Johnny, and Mackie. Uh, we're all here trying to hopefully bring a better transition peer experiences for you and get you ready for your UQ journey coming up. Um, so while we're wait, we can probably just wait for a few more minutes as we are still getting a lot more students coming in through the session. Uh, in the meantime, while I am well, while we are going through the session, you're more than welcome to use the Q and A functions. So we will be able to address any of the queries or questions that you have. Um, and simply put that in the Q&A, and one of my colleagues will be able to answer you through that way as well. So we're probably going to just wait for a few more minutes, then we'll get things started. get things started it was it was fabulous it was wonderful to see so many of you guys joining us today and it was it was amazing it's it's really good that you guys are being very proactive and getting things prepared and ready for your staff for semester two this year um again good morning good afternoon and good evening wherever you are i'm not sure about where you are but it's it's been a beautiful day here in brisbane um Actually, it's been almost a beautiful day every single day here in Brisbane. So you have made absolutely the amazing choice to choose University of Queensland. And just a little bit about Queensland and Brisbane, even though we'll talk a little bit about, about that later on as well. But here in Queensland, here in Brisbane in particular, there are over 300 days of sunshine each year. So, so let that settle in. Think about it. How many days a year? 365. That's right. There are only there are over 300 days of sunshine every single year. Wow. Amazing, isn't it? It's a beautiful sky, especially the sunset right now. I'm looking out my windows. I can see the beautiful sunset out there. Purple color, a bit of mix of purple and pink. Just, just imagine that, that you can actually see that every single day. Uh, how good is that? How beautiful is that? And that's actually one of the most amazing attraction from Brisbane as well is, is this beautiful weather with, with, with amazing natural aspects. You know, when you compare with uh, cities like Melbourne, where it rains all the time, you know, let's think about it. Right now it's already winter. Pop that with a little bit, you know, um, rainings and, and yeah, no, I could not imagine that. So yeah, it's a good choice. Didn't go down to Melbourne because uh, yeah, I would hate that weather. Anyway, all right, well, let's, let's not beat around the bush. Let's get things started. I'll start to share my um, slides with you. Again, I understand today's session is scheduled for two hours. Um, potentially my, or well, possibly my session will probably last just a little bit around an hour. Mark, then I'll pass on to, to my colleague, Mackie and Johnny, who will also be sharing about their experiences um, towards the end as well. And then we'll have some uh, session sometimes towards the end for some Q and A. But in the meantime, all my colleagues here, Andrew, Michelle, Angela, Johnny, and Mackie, they will be monitoring the Q and A uh, rooms. And you're more than welcome to put your questions there, and they will be able to help you uh, with with those queries. All right, let me share my screen. Oh, let me start the slides. Awesome. So welcome, welcome, welcome again to the um, to the International Student Pre-Departure Seminars. Again, we're hoping that this will be a great preparation for your start of semester two, 2023, and your amazing UQ journey awaits. To start with, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional landowner where we're meeting today, the Torba and Jegra people. On behalf of UQ, we'd like to pay our respects to their ancestors and their descendants who continue the cultural and spiritual connection to the country. We recognize their valuable contribution to Australia and global society. Okay, some of you may have been to some of the previous UQ presentations, seminars, sessions, and you may have seen some similar acknowledgement of countries in the past. And maybe it is the first time for you to see, you'll probably be wondering, what is this about? You know, what is this, this picture here? And what is this wording here? 
Well, I can tell you a little bit of back, background story, a little bit of history. You know, of course, this land belongs to a tourist island, Aboriginal and tourist islanders. They are the landowner, traditional landowners for, for thousands and thousands of years. And of course, we know the short history of Australia, and some of you probably particularly understand the uh, a little bit, I guess, unpleasant experience or history of the stolen generation or white policies. So for roughly around 10 years ago, former Prime Minister Kevin Rudd did a public apologies to the Aboriginal and Torres Islanders. And this is so powerful. And we want to use this opportunity to encourage you to understand more about Hey, who are who are the traditional land owners, and what is their connection to the land? What is the kingship? What is the, what's, what means by their mobs? And what is the rainbow serpent? Especially if you got a dependents, got a little ones, they probably be very interested in knowing what is the rainbow serpent. And and you know what? As a matter of fact, when you have started your university degrees, when you have entered UQ. Before you are doing a presentations in the future, you can also give a acknowledgement of country as well. So this is uh, these are the topics where we will be covering today, including what to prepare before you arrive, thinking about once how about the process, the transition, the adjustments, help you understand how to better settle in at UQ talking a bit about UQ Life, what we can offer you here on campus, as well as here in Brisbane, as well as a little bit emotional journey. And then we'll leave the, re the rest of some of our, uh, Mackie and Johnny to share their part as well. All right, first thing first. Okay, I, I understand that most of you are joining the session because potentially you are still overseas at the moment. Okay, if that's you, you know, you probably are very, very familiar with the checklist already. Okay, all right. Well, look, I, I, I hope I hope I don't need to sell you more about UQ, how amazing Brisbane this city is, but if you haven't made up your mind, I hope that this session will help you to, to reassure you that you have made the right choice to, to come to Australia to study here at University of Queensland. So once you have made up your mind, make sure, make sure you accept your offer as soon as you can. I understand it's still early June. You're probably thinking, hey, uni is not going to start around mid-July. You got about four, five, six weeks left. What's a rush, you know? Don't worry about it. Let's take it easy. I, I like your mentality. It's it's good to feel pretty chill about <laughs> of like have a chill lifestyle. That's really good. However, it's also good to be prepared in advance. That's why make sure make sure you start thinking about when once you have accepted your offer. There are a few steps, you know, afterwards, including you need to get your student visa sorted as quickly as possible. It is actually a fairly straightforward process. I'd say it's not very tricky at all. I understand that if you are uh, watching a lot of news, uh, you probably have heard that there are some rumors or there has been some gossips that it has it, it's a little bit challenging to get a student visa at this moment. I want to reassure you that is not true. It is actually fairly straightforward. As long as you have a valid offer, you can you got your confirmation of enrollment, you will be able to apply for your visa fairly straightforward and shouldn't if you encounter any issues make sure you contact your education agent or contact UQ admission team for further support as well all right so in the offer letter you will be able to receive the link or essentially your UQ email or UQ login details so make sure make sure to activate and login your student account as soon as you can. Look, it is a great way to communicate because your UQ email would probably be the main communication tools or, or pl platform where you will be contacting UQ. And we'll, mo most likely, you know, when me, Andrew, Michelle, Angela, when we're trying to work with you, we'll probably also be sending email to your UQ email account as well. So make sure activate your account, access your emails, start to get some of the benefits. All right, and we'll be going through some of the U uh, starting at UQ website. I'll, I'll show you a screenshot, don't worry. And then there will be a few things um, follow up by that. So I know there are quite a lot of words here. Do, do not worry, that's okay. We'll also be sending you the slides afterwards as well. But we're actually going to details of all each point. So do not worry. 
Okay, I understand some of you probably, you know, thinking about whether it's possible to change the, 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 the program that you have decided or whether you want, you still, you know, second guess yourself. The thing is, UQ will give you that flexibility. That's right. We understand, you know, this is a big decision. You know, you probably thinking maybe, maybe the program that you enrolled, you registered, it's maybe your, it's your parents' decision, right? You know, I, I, I understand that totally, 100%. Um, but you know what? If you're thinking about changing programs, we can help as well. If you want to change programs before you start UQ, before enrollment, our admission team can help. Or if you have simply decide, decided to change it afterwards, we can help as well. We'll work closely with your faculty to make sure that you get the program that you really desire. So I want to reassure you that, you know, we would like and we would welcome you to come on campus on some, in semester two. All right, I understand previously, uh, you know, due to COVID, there has been quite a lot of limitations. You know, you have that restrictions. But now, you know, I, I think we, we probably can say goodbye to COVID. Okay, maybe maybe not that, you know, I'm still supporting students with, with COVID due to various reasons. But we probably can safe to say that Right now, you know, we would like to see you back on campus. We would like to see you activate on campus. We would like to see you enjoy that campus environment because, well, I mean, Mackie and Johnny are going to show you more, show you a bit more, but this is the best part about being a university student, especially being a UQ student, because there are so much to offer. However, if for whatever reasons that you are unable to attend on campus for semester two 2023, there may be certain exceptions that you are permitted uh, not to attend. However, make sure, make sure, double check, double check with us, with, uh, with your faculty, so that you are getting supported. But the key message here is important, come to campus. That's right, come to Australia, and we will personally welcome you here at UQ campus. Here are some important dates I want to go through. Okay. Right now, we're about June, well, but by the time of the recordings, it is about June. Um, but essentially, the important thing dates all roughly around July, early August. Especially, I want to first mention the 14th of July. Okay, this is actually the date before orientation. All right, I'll talk a little bit about orientation shortly. But the 14th of July, it is important because it's the last day to change programs through Synet. Okay. I know you're probably thinking about why would I want to change programs? The thing is, you know, once you have arrived, you start talking about people, you start talking about with, with peers, with teachers, you realize, hmm, you know what? Um, I, I think I probably prefer commerce over business management. I want to change from business management to, 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 uh, to commerce or to economy, whatever that may be. You know, you can do that, but make sure you do that uh, by the 14th of July. That is cut off for this semester. But, you know, you can still change it in the future semesters. You can give you that flexibility and that degree of freedom. So do not worry if you missed out. That's not an issue at all. Don't worry. And then it comes the best part and best experience is the orientation week. That's right. Why, why it is important? Okay, there, there are a few different elements and aspects of orientation week that I want to highlight. First thing first, it is actually a great way for you to get to know UQ campus. That's right. Okay. So I, I guess probably most of you, um, this might be the first time coming to Australia, coming to Brisbane. Um, so it's good to navigate your way through the, uh, the, the different fact, the buildings and different roads and different systems here. Coming to orientation, it's the best way for you to know who are the people, where are they located, and what do they do. There are dedicated campus tours. That's right. People can show you around the campus. It's big. It's like a city itself. I sometimes still get lost. I'm not sure about Andrew. I think Andrew probably know the campus pretty well. But for me, I still get lost. And I've been working here for a long time. So think about it. Join some of the tours. You can, always, you can also get to know the library a bit more as well. There are dedicated library tools, help you to understand where are the libraries are located and how to be able to access those resources. Not only that, but also there will be a lot of dedicated sessions organized by your school and faculty. That's right. So that's actually the best opportunity to know your peers. 
to get to know other students who are also starting at UQ for the first time, make really good connections and friends and get to know your lecturers and course coordinators, your tutors, because they will be the one who will help you along this academic progression journey as well. And of course, it's not just this boring information overload. There are always there are also lots of fun activities, lots of free stuff. That's right. Free calendars, free notebooks, free food, free drinks. That's right. Anything that you can think about. So orientation, we always highlight it's the best part. And always in, in most cases, orientation normally finishes with toga party. Okay, so what is toga party? That's right. It is a party and it's a big party, right? That's right. Um, so of course, you know, it's it's uh I hope your parents are not listening, but you know, you're coming here without your parents, right? Or most of you. So you would like to have a bit of fun, right? Study is important, but having fun, it's also important. Study hard, party hard. That's right. Okay, I didn't say that. You know, study hard, that's important. But you know what? There will be so much to offer at UQ orientation. So make sure, make sure, be here before orientation starts and enjoy the most out of it. I also want to say that because um, we, we would often, in our role, we often talk to students who need support. And, and one of the general feedback we get is the students often actually feel regret about missing orientation. Um, they feel like, oh, if I came to orientation, I'll probably know about, hey, this help, that help. I'll probably be able to make more friends, join some of the different clubs and societies. So from the bottom of my heart, make you know come to orientation you can and join many many of the sessions when it, whenever you are available okay so on the on the last day of the orientation i hope that you have enrolled okay what it means by enrolled right i've already accepted my offers isn't am i enrolled well technique once you have accept your office you're one step you, you're, you're one foot in the door you're almost there but enrollment means that you have already or you have taken uh, I'll sign up for a particular course. That's right. So most students, hopefully, that you are doing a full-time studies. And as a full-time low study load, you would probably be expected to study four courses. So as long as you have enrolled in at least one course by the end of orientation, then you will be okay. And then, of course, class starts the following week. Uh, so following Monday, that's where all the fun starts, having having a bit of class. And, but of course, you know, enjoy yourself as well. Have a bit of good balance. I want to mention the first important day here, the 1st of August. Okay, so why it is important? Because it's the, uh, it's the due date for your tuition fees. <laughs> that's right. So if you haven't paid uh, by that day, you probably will receive a call from UQ saying, uh, hey, John. I will notice that you haven't paid your tuition yet. Is, uh, is everything okay? Uh, you know, look, <laughs> I'm sure you'll be okay. But uh, genuinely, if you do need help, come to see student services, come and see us, and we can try to talk about your options as well. Not only it's a due date for uh, tuition, but it's also the last day to change your enrollment. Okay, what do we mean by that? Okay, well, earlier we talked about each semester, preferably you will do four subjects four courses, okay? You're probably thinking, hey, four, it's, it's pretty easy, right? It's only four. Um, the, the, the truth is each course, roughly, you're probably looking at about three to four hours of class teaching time. That's right, a week, four hours of teaching time, right? Not, not a lot, you, I can handle that. But uh, the differences between university studies versus high school or some other institutions is that it does require quite a lot of independent studies. Okay, so that's that's a part where a lot of students get got wrong is they think I simply just need to be there in the class for four hours and just party the rest of the, the week. Well, you can, but you're likely to fail your course. So we would recommend for every four hours of your of your teaching time, roughly you're probably looking at about another 10 hours on that particular subjects to do independent studies. We're talking about literature reviews. We're talking about accessing resources, doing extra readings and preparing for your homework as well. Those hours are unavoidable. You have to, you have to put in the effort. Otherwise you may feel regret towards the end of the semester. So think about it. If you are doing four courses, you know, each course you have four hours plus that 10 hours of, um, of, of extra times, so then we're probably looking at about 60, 
That's actually quite a lot. Hey, 50 hours, 40 to 50 hours already. That's a lot. That's that is a lot, isn't it? So think about some students think, hey, they can do five subjects. You know what? You can try. You can give a go. You can give a go for five, but don't do it. It's it's probably like a suicide, right? You want to still want to go out, have a bit of fun. You know, don't do that. So as, as a matter of fact, you can make any changes within the first two weeks of your semester. Yes, any changes. You can change, you can drop this, add that, drop that, add, add this. That's right. No penalties, no liability. But end of week two is so important. Why? Because how many weeks do we have each semester? That's right. Some students did probably did the research. There's only 13 weeks a semester. That's right. So quick, right? 13 weeks. Whew. Right now we're talking about pre-departure. You know, in, in about 15 weeks, we'll be talking about your exams. Crazy times, isn't it? You have another holidays. So because the semester is so, so short, if you miss two weeks of teachings from the courses that you're planning to, to add, it's actually really impossible, really, really difficult to catch up on all the missed lectures, tutorials, pracs, seminars, whatever that may be. So that's why we do not recommend students to add any courses after week two, because it's simply really, really hard to, catch, to, to, to want to catch up. But saying that, saying that you can't add any more courses after week two, you can still drop any courses throughout the semester. Yeah, you hear that right. Can you do that in high school? Can you just drop your biology just before final exams? I don't think so. No, I think your teacher will probably have a bit of argument with you. But here at UQ, you can. That's right. How amazing is that? Is we give you that degree of freedom that you can actually drop the courses pretty much throughout the semester up until your final exams. So for example, let's come down to the, the second important day, the 31st of August. It's called Census Day. Why do you call Census Day? Because by that day, we're hoping that you know what you want. Okay, so for example, we have some brave students taking on five subjects at the very beginning. And you know what? It is a terrible decision and you have regretted. So it's now coming down to the end of August you feel like, oh, James, I'm regretting. You know, I'm, I'm, it's, you know, my, my brain is giving up on me. I need all the hours to, um, to study. I simply don't, and I still want to have a fun time. And you know what? You can actually still drop the fifth course. That's right. You can still drop it by the 31st of August, and there's absolutely no penalty at all. That's right. So once you drop, UQ will actually give the money back to you. You don't have to pay for that course at all. And there's absolutely no academic liability whatsoever. It's just like you never, never took the course. It will simply show up in your academic transcript as a W, a withdrawal. Yeah, how good is that? But make sure, make sure that you do that before census. Because if you drop the courses after census, after 31st of August, Yes, you can drop it, but there will be liability. There will be penalties. Okay, so if you drop it in the month of September, for example, if you drop it in the month of September, then there will be, um, there will be, essentially, you won't be able to get your tuition feedbacks. And then if you drop it, essentially, a, a little bit later than that, then there will be also penalties, academic penalties. Okay, so just be mindful. If you're not sure, Come and see us, come and see me, come and see me, Andrew, Michelle, Angela, whatever that um, you know you think will help you. We were trying to offer you good, uh, good advice as well. And like I said, semester will finish very, very quickly and you will have another holidays. So this is the website we talked about earlier. You probably are familiar with this. And you know, it may look a little bit different by the time as, as I do the screenshot, but essentially a very getting familiar with starting a UQ website, give you really good step-by-step -step instructions. Highly recommend to give a go and, and check it out. So this is what we're talking about. Make sure, make sure you enroll in any in at least one courses, you know, before orientation, so that we know, hey, you know, you're you're being pretty serious about coming to UQ. I know all of you are serious about coming to UQ, right? How amazing is UQ? How good is Brisbane? Why not? You know, I wouldn't want to go to Melbourne for that miserable weather or go to Sydney's for that really packed lifestyle. Hmm. Uh, too much for me. Brisbane is good. Brisbane is the best.
I think, you know, study Brisbane is probably should pay me for promoting that. Hey, anyway, <laughs> just joking, just joking. All right, we want to mention, we want to promote the um, one of the modules. It's um, UQ Essential for international students. Why we want to promote it? Because it's actually designed by UQ students, by you. That's right. So if you look at all these young faces, they are UQ students who actually took part and, and designed this course. So you can actually scan the QR code, join the sessions, uh, sorry, join the module. It may take you about two, three hours, but it's actually give you really, really good information, lots of useful tips. And you know what? Even better, you can actually get a certificate. That's right, at the end, once you finish. How good is that? You get a certificate before you even start uni. Huh. You can show that to your parents. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about accommodation. I, I think I saw a few familiar names there who probably have joined some of my uh, accommodation sessions in the past. Um, again, there are dedicated accommodation sessions. So scan the QR code and joining one of sessions by me or Andrew. We want to give you a, a really good overview of the, of the, um, of the rental market here in, in Brisbane. Um, and we want to help you to understand what are your options. But essentially, most of the uh, first-time international students would preferably go with uh, student accommodations. So some of the, the, the more established student accommodations, you know, including the Skype, UniLodge, Student One, inquire with them, try to book in with them, and make sure that uh, you, know, you can have a place to stay before you arrive. Why we're saying that? Because in the past about 12 to 18 months, there has been quite a, uh, um, a, bit of, a bit of competition among the rental market that we have witnessed. Um, so some of you probably are, are pretty um, you know, up to date with what's happening here in Brisbane. Um, and sim simply because how good the Brisbane is, we have seen quite a lot of interstate migrants. That's right, people from Sydney and Melbourne coming to Brisbane. Yeah, it just shows how good Brisbane is. But because they are actually coming here, it actually has increased the, the, the pressure and competitiveness um, of, the, of the rentals. And there has been actually a little bit, um, a bit of lagging in terms of new buildings to um, uh, new building approvals, uh, as well as just a shortage of supplies. Uh, consequently, we, we have uh, witnessed one of the, the, the really worst rental crisis uh, in, in the past decades. So the, the, the general message here, I don't want to scare you or anything. I think there are still a lot of uh, vacancies, availabilities, expand your research. There are definitely options, but start early, act early, and trying to book in um, to, to, to one of the uh, established and well-known student recommendations if you can. Yeah, try, and try to watch out for some scams as, as well. So just be, be mindful. If you need any support, any information, uh, join this webinars uh, or come and see us and uh, or we can chat a bit more as well. Oh yes, so this is our, some of the on-campus options. Um, so Camp Kamodi, which unfortunately it's, uh, it's fully booked at the moment. Uh, so they, they are on campus very close and there might still be some vacancies with some of the residential colleges. And you can you can check with them, so King's College, uh, John St John's College, Union College, Grace College. Um, if you are based at Gatton, you can certainly inquire with Hall of Residence, um, and there are certainly a few different options available. So um, our message is act early and um, trying to to make a decision as as quickly as you can to avoid you know getting regret. If, if you are considering a private rental, um, definitely it is a good option uh, because it would probably be much cheaper compared with student accommodations or some of the residential colleges. That, that is for sure. That is 100% sure. Um, um, how, however, however, one thing you do want to consider, and, and we need to, um, I guess, inform you that um, it, it's probably a quite, quite a, um, I guess, intense process. Because think about it, think about it, you know, most, most people would like to go into private rentals because you have that uh, flexibility, right? You know, unlike student accommodation, everything is just in set, you know, this is what you get, this is this, this, this is that, this is the location you can't choose. 
with a lot of restrictions, but private rental, yes, you have quite a lot of um, options to choose with. You know, you can choose, you know, one bed, two bed, you can rent a whole house. You can you can choose to live near the train stations or bus station, uh, near the river, got beautiful views. Um, yeah, you, a lot of options to offer. However, most people would actually think in that way as well. So not just you, you're not just competing with other students, potentially other um, uh, other domestic students as well, other international students who have been here for a little bit with some rental experiences, or even some other mature age um, individuals, adults, working professionals. So it is a quite a competitive market, um, is especially if if you don't have much previous rental experiences, you might actually feel quite disadvantaged in, in, in this process simply because the real estate agent or the landlord, they when they are reviewing your applications, they want to know that, hey, I want a real, I want a, a bit of reassurance that, uh, you know, this, this individual's, this tenant is going to pay, which I have no doubt that you will be able to. But uh, when, when they are looking at your application and looking at someone else's application who has quite a long rental history, there's no um, um, rent arrays. And basically, they pay um, on time all that's really clean and good history. Then, of course, the landlord and then the, and the uh, agent would choose the one with good rental history. So this might be an option once you have settled down here in Brisbane, you know, staying student accommodation for a few months you know, try to get familiar with your neighborhood, with your environment, understand which suburbs are better for you, for your needs. Um, then you can potentially team up with some of your peers, your friends, and then and, and trying to go and, and, and rent a place together. So private rental may not necessarily be a, a popular option when you first arrive. Um, I would still highly recommend to go with student accommodation if you can. I understand that some other students uh, previously in, in my uh, accommodation sessions inquire about homestay. So that is also an option as well. Uh, just trying to look for the more established and well-known homestay providers. And um, just be mindful of the locations, the, uh, what, what is included, and try to protect yourself as well. If you're not sure, just come and see us and we can chat about your, your options. And most of all of you, um, if you are new to UQ and this is your first time coming back to UQ, we will offer free airport receptions. That's right. So we will have the limousine there and pick you up and get your luggage. And, and uh, yeah, it's it's a fantastic experiences. So make sure, make sure you book your airport pickups. It's free. Did I mention it's free? Yeah, from UQ, gift from UQ. Uh, book it advance, uh, in advance at least three days so that we can work with the, uh, the the transport company to pick you up. And even if you are a Gatton student, you hear right, if you're in Gatton students, we can pick you up and drop you at Gatton campus as well or, or your location, your, your accommodation in Gatton too. So how good is that? Save you hundreds of dollars, hey? Um, so we we talk, we would talk a little bit about the, the finance as well. I, I I think most of you probably are on top of that too. You probably have have seen or all are expecting um, some of the uh, expenses. So just be mindful that when in terms of accommodation, that's probably going to be your biggest expenses of. All. I mean, apart from tuition fees, but. I probably assume tuition fees is covered. Um, so out of that, accommodation is something that you really need to be mindful. Okay, so so probably potentially need to be prepared at least about six to eight weeks of rent um, to be available at least. Uh, why is that? Because simply you need about four weeks of, um, of, of worth of four weeks of rent as the bond money. So this is a bond money. It's, it's like a security bond where essentially you can't touch but also your agent, your landlord can't touch neither. So not most, most of the individual, most of the tenants would actually lodge that with RTA and the money would actually sit with RTA. You can't touch and your landlord can't touch, but why do you have to do it? It's simply because it's a guarantee. It's a guarantee that just in case something happens with your contract, with this lease agreement, then this is a way to protect you and protect your landlord as well. So when you eventually finish your, your, your lease, finish your tenancy, uh, when you leave and, and after check everything, everything's fine, you keep the place really nice and clean, then the bond will be returned to you in full as well. And normally also the agent would uh, will request a payment of two weeks uh, uh, advanced rent. This is a quite common practice as well. It's not a scam. So don't worry.
So when you first settle down, potentially you, unless you are in a student accommodation, um, if you are in private rentals and you probably need to connect into some utility fees, but for um, student accommodation, those fees will likely to be included in your, in your weekly rent already. So just be mindful, uh, this will probably require you to prepare uh, six to eight weeks of, of rent in advance. So just have that ready handy uh, so that you won't be surprised. And next, we want to mention a, a little bit about the health insurance. So all of you would have the health insurance cover. I'm not going to uh, go into too much details of, of this particular health insurance. Why? Because we actually have dedicated sessions on health insurance. That's right. So rather than, you know, the, going to the too much details, spend the whole hour talking about health insurance, you know, we'll, I'll probably leave you to, uh, to sign up to one of the uh, upcoming health insurance sessions in the next few weeks. I want to mention some of the the the, um, the apps here. It's really, really useful and amazing apps, mostly by Allianz, so Allianz My Health, Allianz Care, and Mental Health Wellbeing app. Most of the UQ students are actually with Allianz Health Insurance. This is the default health insurance providers for UQ students. However, it is quite possible that you are with another providers like Medibank, NIB, whatever that may be. Maybe you chose that, maybe your agent chose that, but that's okay. If you do need support, if you want to understand a bit more about um, the health systems, I highly recommend to joining us for the health insurance information sessions coming up. I, I particularly want to mention in the, in the right bottom here, the, uh, the Sonda app. Okay, so what is Sonda? Sonda is actually a security app, a security company. Okay, you're probably thinking, why does that matter to me? To start with, if you are with Allianz, it's actually free. That's right. You already got a free bodyguard. Okay, maybe, maybe not a bodyguard, but you know, they're a really good security company. But you're probably thinking, you know, we're not Sydney, we're not Melbourne. It's actually pretty safe here in Brisbane, <laughs> unlike our southern part, counterparts where it's uh, the crime rate is fairly bit high. It's actually overall fairly safe here in, in Brisbane. However, sometimes, you know, if you are going out uh, late at night and you go to a place where you're not familiar with, you actually can contact Sonda. So use their app. There's a function. This is just one of their amazing functions. One of this functions is called Check on Me. So essentially, you can tell the uh, the sonda that where you are going, and they can and, and what time to check in with you. So potentially, you so say you go out for a run and ask them to check in with you after fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, make sure that you're still on track. Then you know they can make sure that you are safe. Or alternatively, if you uh, go out for a date, you know, and uh, <laughs> if if you can you can ask sonda to ring you around eight and uh, say for example halfway through the date you feel like oh yeah. yeah. It, it's not what you were expecting. Sonda can actually give you a good way to uh, to quickly leave the <laughs> the, the restaurants or all the day. Just just joking, but you know what? It's it's amazing, amazing app that, that you would really find it's very very useful as well. It's free as well. Very good. All right, so we're coming to talk a little bit about what to pack. Yes, Brisbane is a big country town. I'm not going to lie. Yes, we do have a few tall buildings, uh, but I was probably think it's uh, compared with some of the metropolitan cities, especially in, in Asia, um, Brisbane is probably considered a little bit rural, uh, I guess, I guess from, from certain perspective aspects. However, uh, there are still uh, uh, mostly that things you need here. So you don't actually have to pack everything. You don't have to bring all your blankets here. Uh, you don't have to, you know, get all the, all the appliance here. Mostly you can actually buy it here. Um, unless it, is, it has some sentimental values to you, you know, that cushion, that, that, you know, pillow that you really have to have, and you can't actually carry that with you to the air, on the air, airport, you can send it over here as well. Uh, we would recommend simply trying to keep it succinct, keep it neat, um, just some of the important documents, essential medication, prescription. You can actually bring up to three months of your prescription here. Um, so the customer would let you in. That's not a problem. If you want to bring more, essentially, you wouldn't need to actually check in with a, a local doctor here and get a, a, a local prescription and be able to buy your medicine here as well. If your medicine is somehow unavailable here, then potentially the doctor can work with, with you in terms of how to organize it or, or source it from overseas too. 
you know, if you have prescription, if you have, a, um, you know, wearing glasses, come to bring a few pairs, you know, like people like me, it's always good to have extra pair just in case if you can't find it, you know, you know, you, you put it down and the next time you can't remember it's gone. Um, <laughs> that would be a nightmare. So make sure to have a bit of backup plan as well. Okay, so once you arrive, make sure your visa status is correct. Uh, I'm sure the airline will probably check, check in with you before you board the plane as well. Uh, make sure you do have a valid address here in Brisbane or Gatton, uh, as well as sometimes you may be required to show your vaccine certificate, um, but it really depends on your airline. One thing I can reassure you is uh, here in Australia as well as customs, just come, <laughs> you'll be all right. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll be okay. Okay, so once you arrive here, make sure you get a, a SIM card. So some students ask whether they can use their international numbers. As long as you have the international roaming on, yes, 100%, you can use that, no problem at all. But it will probably be cheaper and more financially viable to get a SIM card here. You can certainly consider the prepaid options or sign up for a contract if you like. And then trying to get your accommodation all set up, unpacked. That's why we would recommend be here probably a week or so before orientation so that you got time to get or explore your local neighborhood, get to know your neighbors, talk to the people on the street. And okay, maybe, maybe not. Maybe. Uh, well, look, it's it, there's no harm. Practice your English, right? Just touch this chair. And people are quite friendly here in Brisbane. Um, you know, we all, we all kind of get, look out for each other. So totally fun. It's great, great city, great, great environment. And then trying to get your student ID as well. Look, um, I'm not sure how many of you actually got your ID. You probably haven't because given that you're still overseas. Um, but think about it. Think about it. How many of you actually have a good ID photo? Yeah. I know, right? Well, I, I see someone was uh, very brave enough to raise up their hand. Uh, fantastic. I don't know about you, but I never had a really good ID photo. I don't know if it's to do with my face or uh, it's to do with the photographer, but my wife keep on reassuring me that, James, you, you look good. You're the, the best looking husband in the world. So that's reassuring. But you know what? Uh, we understand if it's a concern for you, you can actually take the photo yourself. That's right. So think about it on a Sunday afternoon, feeling comfortable lying on the couch, get your phone out and turn on the selfie with the right amount of filter, right amount of lightings, take the photos. I've seen some shocking ones. I, uh, I, I look at the photos and I look at the students. I said, uh, are you sure we're, you're here to see me? <laughs> just joking, just joking. But you know what? As long as you feel happy about it, if you're confident to, to, to do that, we will print it for you. That's right. Upload your photos and we'll print it and you can pick it up at the Student Central. So open a bank account. Bank account. Um, unfortunately, the, uh, the we used to have a bank here on campus, uh, but uh, since COVID, they have left us. I hope they're coming back. I really do because they, um, they, they're pretty good banks. But uh, essentially, you have to go to your neighborhood or nearest shopping center or in the city to uh, to do your banking business, uh, potentially put a deposit and get your bank card. Um, and then come to some of the sessions. So there will be some getting started, some safety sessions. It will be amazing, amazing information for you to uh, to get familiar with. So our team actually specialized in, in helping students. Trust me, we're not just telling jokes, even though we do have quite a bit, but we actually help you with the transition. So we wanna make sure that you feel supported. We provide counseling, well-being support, learning study that support, uh, disability, diversity, and inclusion support. So if you feel like potentially you may benefit from having say extra times in your exams, having extensions for your assignments, come and talk to us we'll be able to help. And so we also have dedicated employability advisors. So you're probably thinking, why do I have to think about my jobs right now? I'm just starting my uni. Well, the thing is, uh, most of us probably are hoping to get a job by the end of the degree, isn't it? I mean, I'm not sure about you, but I think I have that in, I have that in my mind when I started uni. Um, and so, so it's never too early to explore your options. So it's always a good idea to um, to be able to 
uh, to make connections. So our employability advisors can connect you with alumni, the students who used to study this program and now in working the field. They can tell you what it's like to be an accountant in a day, what it's like to be an engineer working in a field one day. So give you that really good insight tips about what to expect, what to anticipate and what to look out for. And also a great way to connect you with past students. And so that you potentially they might, hey, John, I've got a job here. Are you interested? Or maybe start with some volunteer opportunities. Great way to get into your future jobs. We also have amazing library and IT support. So traditionally you think library are just books, but nowadays library is a lot more modern and pretty much all digitalized. That's why it actually are together with the IT team. So they do amazing, amazing trainings, like help you with uh, Zoom trainings, Excel trainings, how to do EndNote. They're fantastic. So if you haven't, make sure to do the library tools. There are, um, we got a few different libraries here. We got, you know, law library, uh, biolo biological science library, engineering library. What I like most is the um, central library, or also called the social science library. Not only because it opens 24 seven, but it also has multiple stories. Get that? Stories, books, levels, multiple stories. Haha, <laughs> I hear you laughing. Yes, I'm a dad. I can get away with this joke. So, uh, you know what? <laughs> To enjoy some of the library facilities. We also have a sleeping pod. That's right, you hear right. You can actually have a nap in a sleeping pod in the library. How amazing is that? How good is that? It's like working Google and even better. Uh, okay, well, maybe not to compare with that, but you know, it's pretty good. And we also have multi-phase chaplaincies catered for all denominations too. For particular international students, we help you with your transition to living in Brisbane, Australia, understand university policies, providing with financial welfare, health issue support. If you're thinking about bringing your families, your dependents, your spouse, your partners, or even your parents, we can help as well. And we do a lot of workshops and individual appointments. Here are some of the sessions coming up, including Getting Started, Safety in Australia, Program Welcome and Information. Um, I particularly want to pull a plug for the Safety in Australia sessions. It is absolutely amazing. Even though it is, it is a fairly safe city, we still want you to, to use your um, common sense. It is very, very important. So sign up and, and join one of the sessions. We also have some jumpstart sessions. EAC English for Academic Communication. This is so good. It is actually organized and provided by the UQ College. So they're actually specialized in teaching English. That's right. So maybe, maybe English is not your first language, or maybe you have been away from university settings for a little while. EAC, it's a perfect program to help you to give you a bit of boost to your, to your, to your English learning styles, to teach you how to do a literature review how to um, potentially uh, do research, how to maybe even manage your time. So it's an intense two weeks course online dedicated and they are actually by discipline as well. So, you know, you'll probably be able to meet with some other students doing engineering, other students doing science and learn together, making friends, connections, good connections. Finding accommodations, health insurance and many, many other workshops as well. Okay, so tell you a bit more about Brisbane. I'm sure you know, and, and by now you're probably already falling in love with this beautiful city, isn't it? I'm still looking outside. Okay, it's a little bit too late now. There's no more sunset, but 30 minutes ago, it was still very beautiful. <laughs> but as I mentioned, Brisbane is the capital of Queensland. So here at UQ, we have three campuses across the um, Brisbane areas. We have amazing, amazing sites. Uh, actually, one thing so amazing about UQ is UQ actually has the most teaching awards among any universities here in Australia. That's right. So we focus so much about teaching because that is the key to have successful graduates, successful alumni like you, like future you. That's right. So if you Google search it, if you don't believe me, search it. UQ has won the most teaching awards. That's right. How good is that? See, this is what I'm talking about. How beautiful is this city? So by the time you came here, you probably will see a few more buildings uh, um, 
you know, right, raise a raisin, a right, pretty much yeah, along the river. So you, you get you get what I mean. So there's amazing sports and recreational activities, lots of good food, restaurants, art, entertainment, natural wildlife, student testimonial, amazing, amazing service uh, attractions here. So you haven't made the right choice. So this is what it looks like uh, uh, at the UQ St. Lucia campus. I'll give you a uh, overview. Oh, look at that. How beautiful is this? So most of your probably teachings and classes are based here around the Great Court. So all of this are UQ uh, teaching buildings. Then you have the playing fields and you know soccer, soccer field, track field, a lot of different fields. There's a beautiful lake as well. And you know what? You can even take boat. So you see the river? You see the river? You can actually take the boat to uni every single day. That's right. No, well, I mean, I mean, if you can afford a boat, yes, you can buy your boat. But what I'm talking about is uh, you can actually take uh, the, the city council ferry the, to, to uni. So instead of taking bus, taking a train, you can actually take a boat. Yeah. Can, can University of Melbourne offer you that? Nah. Can, can Sydney University offer you that? Nah. Only UQ. We also have Hurston campus. Oh, amazing facility, state of art for our dentistry and medicine students, as well as our amazing Gatton campus. Ooh, when, every time I go there, I just can smell all the cow's pools. Okay, pro probably a bit more than that as well, but you, you get what I mean. Oh, absolutely full of nature is there. So lots of animals there, cows, horses. So if you study vet, animal studies or agriculture business, you will love it there. It's your heaven. So UQ Life is where you're having all the fun, all the great activities. My message here is just follow us on social media. So Facebook, people still on Facebook? Yeah, maybe. Anyway, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, WeChat, whatever that you may be on, we are on that as well. That's actually the best way to follow us to understand what's happening. So check us out on the social media page and make sure to join some activities. I'm not sure if I have a picture here. No. So for example, just last week, it was SWOTVAC. What is SWOTVAC? SWOTVAC is actually a week be between your classes and your exams. It's called a swap vacation. It's a holiday. That's right. Uh, it's actually not a holiday. It's a, it's a time for you to, to prepare for your exams. But as part of Swell Wack, we actually bring massage chairs and masseuse here. You hear me right. You can offer you free massage while you're preparing for exams. How good is that? Right? Amazing. So follow us on social media and you'll probably hear more uh, how to get involved. We also have amazing workshops like working while studying, help you to understand what are some of your working rights and how to get text file numbers, as well as what is superannuation. All right, so, so some of you probably are familiar with this curve. Um, so it is, this is a, a, the curve that we, we sometimes, uh, actually many of us have experienced as, as international students. I, I say that with, with firsthand because me, myself, as international students many, many years ago, have also experienced this culture shock and homesickness. It, it is real. It is real. I think statistics suggest that the one, one in five of us would have experienced this or, or even more. So, so the curve started, you know, essentially when we first leave home. Um, it's, it's actually pretty happy. It's joy, right? You know, I, I remember when I first left home, left my parents, I was like, ah, freedom. That's right. I can just do whatever I want now. I don't have my parents nagging on me every day and ask me to do this and that. I can just be my own boss. That's right. And that's exactly what you will be experiencing is you will have that total freedom and you will love it. You will love to do whatever you want to do. You can get up anytime you want. Okay, wait, go to your class. <laughs> Don't miss your class. <laughs> All right, this might be a bit of stretched. Okay, but it, you know what I mean, right? So there will be no one there to really monitor you. So we're simply, it is totally up to you to decide how you want to leave. And, and who, would, who doesn't like the city? You know, you look at the blue sky, the beautiful sunset, 
the amazing people around, people are just laughing, uh, you know, smiling at you. You know what? When you're actually getting on and off the bus, the driver would actually say hi to you. Right, how good is that? Do you, do you have that in your city? Probably not. So you will probably enjoy the moment. You will enjoy that atmosphere. You will enjoy this journey. And you, you will enjoy, wow, okay, you know, my lecture is so nice. You know, my friends are so good. I'm making a lot of really good connections. I love it. I love the food here. Ah, everything is good. But you know what? There will be a moment where you start to realize, oh, I'm not sure. You start to, you have some doubts, okay? What I mean is essentially you probably feel like, oh, okay, maybe the, the food is not that good, you know? I don't want to eat the uh, eat the chicken pasta every night. Uh, I don't want to have that Vegemite. It tastes weird. Okay, if you haven't tried Vegemite, don't. Not recommending. <laughs> okay, maybe for cultural experience, have some Vegemite. Um Maybe you start to think, oh, the study is hard. Maybe, you know, the housemate, the friends, you hear them talking bad about you. And you start to think, hey, have I made the right choice to come here? Do I fit in here? And then that's when you start to probably lose your sleep. You start to um, lose your appetite. You don't feel like eating. Maybe you're, you're losing your motivation. You're just questioning yourself. Maybe you see yourself crying a lot. And you know what? That's normal. A lot of us have experienced that. A lot of us actually have gone through that journey, that homesickness, that culture shock. But the important message I want to pass on here is you're not dealing with this alone. And we're here to help. And our team are trying to, will want to make sure that you have the best experience. So if you notice some of the symptoms, like if you, you know, not talking, you're not socializing, you're detaching yourself, isolating yourself, you're not eating, you're not sleeping, come see us early. Talk to someone that you trust, talk to your families, talk to peers, maybe talk to someone, you know, someone in your faculty that you, you have you have a really good connection with. Because we want to reassure you and we want to you to enjoy your time. The good news is most students do come out of it. How? The key message, the simple message is have a routine. All right, well, what does that mean? Okay, is have a set time to get up, set time to eat your dinner, set time to go to sleep, set time to go to your classes, maybe go to gym, doing some exercises, go out, in, immerse yourself in the culture, immerse yourself in this environment and call this home. Maybe this is your second home and it will be your second home. And eventually things will be okay and you will have a fantastic time. And I guarantee you that. If you do need a bit of further support, you can come to see one of our counselors. So provide a dedicated uh, individual counseling services using psychotherapy uh, for interventions. You can also join some of their workshops. Highly recommended Freedom From Your Cage art for well-being, union well-being programs, sign up and yeah, you will definitely be benefited from those services. All right, well, that's pretty much wrap up my part of the session. Next, I'll pass on to Mackie and Johnny to share a bit more about their experience as well. Hey guys, welcome to UQ. Um, just to start off, my name is Mackie. I'm currently in my fourth year studying a Bachelor's of Clinical Exercise Physiology. Along with my studies, I'm also working three jobs, all with UQ. So that's just UQ Life, which is a CIS job. Um, also student administration and UQ Sport. I'll kind of briefly just talk about my experiences with UQ and general uni life. I'm not going to lie to you, for me, the transition to uni was pretty overwhelming and confusing. I had no idea at all what I was doing from courses um, to making friends, meeting new people, and also especially finding my way on campus because it's a massive campus. Um, so definitely uh, when you arrive, don't feel bad. Um, 
of not knowing anything um, and definitely don't shy away from reaching out and asking questions because when I say this I mean it most people in their first year they have no idea what they're doing as well they're just kind of winging it and you learn as you go over time though and you just gotta like learn um, to give time for these things to kind of adapt um, and just learn to get out of your comfort zone and everything and you'll just learn everything as you go um, but fast forward to a year or so later um, it all just feels quite normal and natural. I've also found my own study style, which has really helped me um, and also love coming onto campus because the UQ community that we have and the vibes on campus are just really good and fun. Um, so often I just really just love going onto campus, meeting new people and having to look at um, of all the different events on campus. And at UQ, there's always something going on, whether it's through UQ Life um, or another association, there's always something that you can find and always something you can do. What I highly recommend for new students, though, is purely just to explore. So just meeting new people. And when you do meet new people, definitely don't hesitate to make connections, okay? Because um, honestly, everyone on campus, and specifically in your first year, um, everyone's looking to make friends. So you definitely won't be alone. You just have to make sure you put yourself out there, okay? So when you meet someone, um, you can just add them on whatever socials um, and just keep that connection alive because you never know when you need that kind of support, I suppose. Um, this also includes just exploring all the different programs and activities offered at UQ. And there are a lot. There's like over like 200, 100 to 200 clubs and societies at UQ. So there's a wide range and variety of clubs to pick from. Um, and there's something like definitely something that you'll be interested in. Um, that you can join and that's a really good way to make new friends okay what really helps me though is I can't rec recommend it enough is volunteering at UQ as well through the get involved program um, this for me kicks out at everything you know you get a volunteer for all kind of different events and meet everyone and it's a very like social kind of experience and you make heaps of friends from it um, so if you end up struggling you know just you can pop yourself into the volunteering program and you can get you know a certificate as well but also attending just events at UQ so at UQ Life we're always putting on events and student support stores uh, where we can hand out things like free food um, chat sessions and also there's like a specific one where you can we bring puppies onto campus and you can have like a little um, play session with them. And that one's always popular. There's always lines for that one. Um, and we often hold those throughout semester, especially in exam season um, and at the start of semester when it's, you know, the pressure is really on. And when it comes to these, um, you can always just stay updated on them. Um, by following us on UQ Life online, just to make sure you don't miss any events or information sessions or anything like that. Um, the other thing is don't be afraid to use the support services offered at UQ. If you have a question, just ask it. Um, and if you need some help, just give UQ a call, honestly. And we're always happy to help you out. Um, we understand it's a very confusing kind of aspect of your life, but something we can definitely help with, okay? Um, so that's mostly from all from me I'll pass it over to Gianni which will talk about her perspective and then you guys can ask us some questions thank you yeah thank you Maggie um my name is Gianni I'm doing I'm currently in my third year I'm doing um ecology and conservation biology so um Maggie just talked about the, the transition of the first year so like I think Maggie did a really great job introducing um his experience at UQ so I think for me personally, I want to share a bit of my experience as an international student and how I transitioned into UQ as an international student. So um, in my perspective, I do think that um, the most difficult part of being an international student and studying abroad is what James earlier talked about, the homesickness and how to find your own people in this brand new place, right? So how to find your own people? I found it really like for me personally, I found it to be really relatively easy to find new people um, through the through your the resources around you. So when I say the resources around you, I mean the people in your accommodation, the people living in your student apartment. Even you can start chatting with the people who are on the same air on the same airplane flying with you to Brisbane. I met a lot of people on the air, on, on the same airplane and ask them oh hello are you a UQ student and they some some of them actually are and we exchange um contact information and we are friends since then 
You can also match your own people by exploring the market, um, the social clubs at market day. So at UQ, we have all different kinds of clubs. We have um, student societies for different, different nationalities and different ethnicities. We also have um, societies from different faculties and majors. So for example, I'm, I know for the, we have the Taisa for Taiwan and CSSA for, for mainland Chinese and like the Hong Kong Student Society. I'm also, um, for me personally, I'm in the ecology society and marine society, which are like the like the student life societies ones and the like the major societies ones. Or you can find your people in all these kind of um, societies. And in the first year, just like what Maggie said, people want to make new friends. So people are generally like they love to connect with people. So make sure to exchange your contact information with them. And in terms of academic, um, I think one important tip for me, for myself, is to email the faculty on time. So if you have any um, dif challenges or difficulties in terms of your academic calendars, planners, courses, please email your faculty and they should be able to get back to you in a very quick time. And third, I want to talk about how Brisbane is a really great place, just as what James mentioned earlier. It really is. Um, I think Brisbane is really cultural diverse and you can always find the cultural, like your own cultural center somewhere in a city. It could be hidden at first. You probably don't know like, oh, where can I find the right grocery store? And where can I find to find the authentic like home country food? Um, it's always somewhere here. And for example, um, so me, I'm from China. So um, the Fresco in Toulon is the only one and only place I shop now because they provide really authentic grocery grocery food and like the um like the materials like the fish, the meat that I need. So make sure to explore Brisbane. Brisbane is a great place. And my own tip for all week is to attend Market Day and please explore the, the campus as you visit and know where all your courses are before your first course. This is very important because what, what would like potentially happen is you would run, if you don't know where they are, you might run into someone that also have no clue where these buildings are on your first day. And it probably ends up with a quite confusing and challenging situation. So um, as what Maggie mentioned, student services and, um, and UQ Student Central is always there for you. Please, um, come to us and email us, call us, contact us if you have any any question. And you can also ask um, in the Q&A session now and we can, we'll try our best to answer your inquiries. Yeah, thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Johnny. Thanks very much for, for your additional comments. That's that's absolutely amazing. Exactly. Like they said, uh, they have got, they're calling Brisbane home. They really love this, this, you know, this campus, UQ, as well as Brisbane um yeah absolutely we want we hope that you have found this session uh useful we're gonna move into a bit of q a so um actually before that um uh, before that well, i think we have um let's try if we can get your help to um to complete a, a short survey okay if you can just get your phone out uh turn on your camera or your qr scanner just scan the the qr code my manager promised me that it is very very short uh, so I trust that it's probably going to only take you one or two minutes. Um, so oh, actually, I'm going to scan as well and just check what's, uh, what's it's asking. Yeah, so the session, you can click on the International Student Pre-Departure Session. Yep, I think yes, indeed, it is pretty short. Just three questions, actually. Actually, after after three questions, there is a bit of comments area, so you can provide any any feedbacks or comments that you like. For example, you can tell them that, uh, you know, James did a good job. <laughs> oh, just kidding. Just kidding. No pressure. Oh, but it would be nice if you say that. No, no, no. Good. Oh, good.
All right, I'll give you guys a few more minutes to complete the survey. Well, I think we might um, just go to some of the Q&As. <clears throat> All right, I'll stop share and uh, we'll probably um, go through some questions together. So if you guys do have any questions, feel free to um, put that into the Q&A and we can go through it together. So if I is asking if you have chosen four courses for the semester, when these courses will be allocated. Yes, absolutely. So essentially in the next few weeks, we will be going through and talking about enrolling as well as timetabling. So that's when you will be able to um, um, get a bit more information. But right now, uh, I think in, in about two weeks time, you will receive a notification about the timetabling preferences. So what that means is you will be able to uh, preference your timetable. Actually, I think it's next week. I think next week, um, we are doing a number of sessions on enrolling and timetabling, and they are faculty based, I believe. Um, so it depends on your faculty. I think I'm doing Bell faculty for business. I think I'm doing that on Wednesday. So actually in that session, we'll be talking about how to choose your timetable, how to do your preferencing, um, how to choose one, two, three, four. But if you're not sure, actually just Google search UQ timetable. It actually tells you, give you a, a video about how to um, how to do your preference. Uh, someone is asking, can you access the ebook for the courses? Absolutely, very good. I like it. I like you being very proactive and getting things prepared. Um, the all the resources will be available through the ECP, so electronic course profile, and and you'll be able to actually find out what are some of the compulsory readings as well as additional readings. So you can actually access them through UQ Library website. Um, Misu asking about the student hub. Yes, uh, that that is very possible that you will not be able to log into student hub because it is actually a bit of separate systems. Um, so what happened is once you have enrolled in UQ, then um, the student hub man uh, management or admin team will actually manually uh, include yourself to the student hub system. So that actually can take a bit of time. So can, you know, um, there's a bit of turnaround in terms of putting you in the system. Yeah. But it's good that you have requested a password so they probably are aware of your case and they will try to get you the login as soon as they can. So Bobby is asked, this is actually a question for Mackie. Um, Bobby is asking that you are working three jobs with UQ. Are those jobs competitive to get? And what do you recommend we to get those jobs? Mackie? Yeah, um, I don't know. Hey, like with those, I feel like it's sort of just luck and getting your name out in the UQ community. I'm not going to lie. Um, like I started off with, volunteering first and I did like a year or so volunteering and I just got to know all the supervisors and everyone um, and then from there I, I got another job and then one job led to another and kind of just spirals down like that um, so that's why I kind of emphasize just making a lot of connections not only with your classmates and you know friends and everything but also with staff, I suppose, like any supervisors or anything you have at volunteering um, or tutors or anything, um, probably, I don't know, don't add them on socials or anything, but just keep that professional, um, you know, connections going. Um, 
yeah but otherwise yeah they are I would say they're really competitive um so you usually do need to have like a strong application um but with those jobs it's more so your people personality and then I feel like all the jobs at UQ they they're really good in the sense that they can be a really good first job. They don't expect much work history wise. They give you all the training and everything. Um, but yeah, you just need to be like a really good communicator and whatnot and just have your name out there and then you should be good. Um, but otherwise you can just have a look on like student hub um, or the Instagram to see whenever they post jobs and just give it a shot, apply away, um, see how you do. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Ricky. Uh, Michelle is asking, one of the requirements to enter, enter to Australia is um, addressing Brisbane. Does that mean you, I can't stay at a short-term place before? Um, I, you can. You certainly can. You certainly can choose. But of course, if you are able to locate a secure a long-term accommodation, I think it will be even better to save you time to move things around. Um, if I is asking again, yes, I would actually recommend to attend the enrolling and timetabling session to, to find out a bit more about um, your timetabling options. Valerie is asking about scholarship updates. Um, yeah, you can you can definitely contact the scholarship team. So scholarships at uq.edu.au. Contact the scholarship teams and inquire about your applications. Hoya is asking, are we allowed to use GDP right now? I'm not too sure what, what do you mean, G? Are you talking about a chat, chat GPT? Is, uh, is, that, is that what you're asking? Uh, the AI? Um, well, if, if that's what you're asking, <laughs> sorry. If that's what you're asking, uh, you can do have actually policies. Um, and then there is this um, anti, plagiarism program would also detect uh, possible options from, from the AI, yes. Um, somebody's asking whether there will be some emails about different orientation programs. Yes, you will, trust me, you will receive a lot of emails. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Someone is asking whether you would be uh, whether you can get the recording. Yes, we will be able to um, uh, put the uh, uh, recordings available. That's correct. Wendy is asking if um, if you have a class and unable to attend because not feeling well, can you join the class online? So so essentially, most of the lectures will be recorded. Um, so it's compulsory now um, from, from semester two this year. So all the lectures will be recorded uh, compulsorily. Um, basically, yes, you will be able to play back the recordings. Uh, if it's a tutorial or prac, um, then double check with your tutor, see if you are able to attend to a different session at a different time. Um, someone is asking about the student clubs and society saying it's not available on the UQ website. Let me just double check. Yeah, I'm looking now, James. Like it doesn't seem to be working for me right now, which is really strange. Uh, it's it's quite possible that they have uh, hidden the clubs and societies at the moment uh, because as as you can imagine, so there will probably be quite a bit of update before the orientation. So I think yeah, definitely keep on checking the page. I think you're right. Um, so just just um, yeah, revisit again. But look, there will be actually Facebook. Let me check Facebooks.
Yeah, I'll probably recommend just follow um, unions on Facebook. So search UK Union on Facebook and actually follow them to find out um, what's, what's, what's happening. Someone is asking about the timetable session uh, for Zoom. Um, let me see if I can find it actually. Yeah, I'm actually going to put a, uh, a link in the chat. So this link, um, it's a it's talking about the uh, enrolling and timetable preference options. Yeah, actually, I'm not sure where they are advertising that for the timetable and enrolling session. I believe it is actually through email, so EDM. That's that's my understanding is they actually it's targeted to sending to all the students within the faculty about that link. So, yeah, sorry, actually, don't have access to it. So Nuru is asking, what is the uh, the normal duration of lease for short-term accommodation? Yeah, I guess if it's a short-term, then it's really negotiable. So I guess, yeah, from a few weeks to three months, as long as it's both a great. And if you want, you can also put a, a leasing agreement or rooming agreement on that as well. So Mead is asking about scholarships. Again, yeah, I would highly recommend just getting in touch with scholarships team. So scholarships at uq.edu.au. Yeah, again, unfortunately, I, I, I think those sessions are targeted. So a, students will probably receive the email. So if you haven't, probably check with your faculty. I only have the link for BAL because I'm doing BAL, but I think my colleagues are doing a few other faculty, so I actually don't have those Zoom sessions. Link, I only have the link for Bell. Um, Barbara yeah, is asking about attendance. Yes, some courses does have uh, certain participation marks. So you have to say, go to 10 out of the 12 course uh, classes to achieve say certain percentage. That is quite possible, yeah. So check your um, course profile. How to join student clubs now? Uh, good, very proactive. Uh, um, I think that because it's actually not showing up on the union, it's actually a little bit hard to to know which clubs you want to go to. Hey, so uh, because you can't essentially just search all of them on Facebook. I mean, you can. All of them are actually on Facebook. You know, we, we have um, most most of the clubs are actually. Um, are um, discipline based so we have um, the you know engineering student societies we have uh, mathematics students clubs uh, some are country based like what uh, johnny suggested and a lot of them are also interest based so you have you know like chocolate appreciation clubs uh, yeah i always wonder what do they do together uh, you know when they're meat is it just uh, eating chocolates <laughs> i would like to join too um or you have the wine and cheese clubs you know i wonder if their entry fees are a bit more expensive <laughs> to just to cover the alcohol so but you wouldn't know which clubs you know there are pokemon fan clubs harry potter clubs 
but I don't know how you're going to search. The union have actually, um, yeah, they've hidden the all the clubs, so you probably won't be able to find out. So may not be able to join right now. But wait and your orientation. Great opportunity to uh, to get to experience all the clubs. Wow, all the questions are still coming. Uh, where can I apply BIS course, and how many classes can I apply for? I'm not sure. It's a Bachelor of Information Systems. Um, I think those those yeah, you probably want to double check with your faculty, EAIT faculty. Yeah, if you want to enroll in courses, if that course is part of your degree, you can simply enroll them on Sinai. That's pretty straightforward. Um, and we normally recommend four cut clock uh, subjects per semester. When does timetable open for preferencing? Let me double check for you. It is 19th of June, uh, so timetable preferencing opens. So that's when you can choose your class, 19th of um, June. Um, you enjoy if you miss the commendation session, you can, you can welcome to join again. I think there's one more session on Thursday. No problem. Is the login of my UQ and UQ library I'm saying? Yes, your login would be the same for all UQ systems. And uh, potentially, yes, you need some, you need to be authorized. So, but you know what? Don't worry. Probably they're still processing your enrollments. It can take a bit of time. Anna, you're asking about your health insurance. Mm, very interesting. If you purchased, if you paid it together, then it should be as through UQ. It would definitely be Allianz Health Insurance. Um, if you want, yeah, you can you can just email the admission team and inquire about your health insurance cover. But I would think it, it normally would be the Allianz. Yes. Um, someone asking about the lecture recordings. Yes, you will be able to view them on Blackboard. So Blackboard is a platform where you can access your learning resources, the course profile, uh, as well as lecture recordings. But yeah, your lecture will let you know. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, yes, library. Someone is asking about printers. So library do have printers. Uh, you probably have to pay, but it's pretty cheap, really cheap. A few cents, very cheap. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, you can certainly print it in the libraries. Yeah, most of the libraries do have print, a, f a lot of printers, yeah. Uh, Maximus is asking about financial tab a dashboard. I don't think there's a financial tab. I think um, the finance would probably be on the Signet. So if you're in the UQ dashboard, click on my Signet and you'll be able to see finance or financial. Um, somebody's asking about internships. Yes, so potentially some school and faculty and even programs do offer internships options um, and opportunities. And you can certainly inquire with your school about possible internships. Alternatively, you can certainly inquire about internships uh, externally. So through like industrial um, professionals and different organizations, they do that as well. Hey, I like I like the comments about the chat GBT. I love it. Gold legend.
And uh, someone's asking orientation, is, is common orientation organized for all students or separate for engineering? Um, yes, it is your faculty based. So you will have your orientation day. Um, well, you basically it's a faculty orientation day. Yeah, that's right. But then there will be also sessions say organized through us or through um, ASD like academic service team uh, or, or other support services. They would be running for open to all students. Yeah, but your faculty will have a separate day just doing all their own thing. Uh, Someone's asking about whether there's like a chat groups for uh, students from the same country. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And Michelle, Angela, do you know if we do that? Do we have a chat groups for students from the same country? I, I don't think so. No, okay. Pro probably not, not, unfortunately. I mean, you could always like give it a go on like Facebook or anything, like just type up like UQ um and whatever place you're from see what pops up and i guess go from there and if anything pops up um join up i suppose but otherwise <laughs> yeah probably not <laughs> yeah good advice thank you thank you Mackie. uh me soon asking whether you can get in touch with your lectures a hundred percent their email address are openly publicly available so hundred percent you can definitely get in touch with them uh, in terms of classmates, I'm not sure whether you can do that before uni starts. Um, it may not quite be possible, but um, I, I really appreciate your enthusiasm um, and being very proactive, which is great. But definitely get in touch with your lecturers, your course coordinators. Asking where you can confirm your balance. Yes, it will be through my sign net. Click on finance, and that's where you can see your balance. Sign net finance. And someone's asking about enrolling a course outside your program. It is possible, definitely. I think um, if it's within the same faculty, then it might it probably be a lot easier um if you are trying to enroll courses uh outside your faculty you you, you can try to apply for approval um, but as long as you know you have an elective you can choose and that elective does not have any restrictions then yeah of course you can choose but just double check with your faculty see if there's any issues asking a free free website help us adapt to learning uh, I'm not too sure which which websites adapt to learning I think we're, we're talking about EAC English for academic English uh, communication uh, that that is a program definitely hi highly recommend I can I can share the slides again just give me a second. Yeah, so that's the EAC. Someone is asking whether internships are paid. It really depends. So it depends on the organizer. Um, so yeah, it could be it could be free, it could be paid. You pay, then pay, then pay you. So it, it really varies. Yeah. And someone is asking when when is the earliest you can have internships? Um, 
yeah, there's no restrictions to be honest. Um, you can you can definitely get in touch with the employability team, inquire about what's on offer from from their end. Uh, alternatively, you can also inquire with the um, um, with your faculty because some of the faculties they do offer internships as well. Then yes, certainly externally there will be quite a lot of uh, internships opportunities on offer. Someone is asking, who do I email for a response regarding issue with enrollments of courses? Um, I guess it depends on what kind of issues. So if you are unable to add courses on Synet, um, yeah, the, again, really depends on what other issues, but I'll probably suggest checking with, checking with admission team first. Um, just double check if anything wrong with your enrollments, because yeah, if you are enrolled, then you should be able to add courses. Someone is asking what are what are the equipments and books needed? Yes, absolutely. So just go on to uh, your course profile, so electronic course profile, and be able to understand and and, and learn a bit more about um, what's required. Uh, so Ray is asking when and and where you can receive the student ID card. Um, you can you can certainly upload the photos and after once you have uploaded photos then we'll be able to print the car for you probably within a few days then you can certainly pick it up from the student central um it will be it's pretty easy to find to be honest everyone is there getting their id cards and if you ask people they will tell you where to go so a pretty pretty simple yeah don't worry you won't miss the building lots of gold colors it's like a palace well, okay maybe not a palace okay but it's a lot of gold colors so and if the school will give us a co-brander credit card or SIM cards, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I'm, I don't think we the, the school would offer credit cards or SIM cards. I don't think so. Uh, are all activities same in all, all week or is it a new session every day? So basically, do I need to... Okay, it really depends. So some sessions are repeated just to make sure, you know, students, different students coming different day can attend. If they are same titles, same, they most likely are same content. You don't have to go again twice unless you really like that presenter. Just want, just want to listen again. You sure can. Hi, I'm enrolling Master of Com Computer Science Management. I received my COE, but still waiting for the scholarship. When would I expect the list to be released? Mm, I'm not sure. I'll probably suggest just double check with scholarship team, scholarships at uq.edu.au. One thing, you know, is there a welcome or starter pack? Um, some school would offer. So come to the orientation. Um, and you probably will receive some information from your faculty and school, and they will give you some really useful um, um, yeah, brochures and information there. Uh, He's asking about health insurance uh, from Allianz. Actually, there is a dedicated Allianz representative. So there's a staff from Allianz stationed at Student Central every single day. So you can actually go there during business hours and ask. So yeah, if you want to find more, you can actually join the OSHC session, the health insurance sessions coming up in the next few weeks and listen and, and understand more about how they can support you. So someone is asking, course fees aren't showing on Signet yet. Do we wait until the timetabling reference has been down? Um, there, there might be a bit of delay. Look, <laughs> uh, I think it's it's common. It it can happen. So you probably just want to refresh it uh, every few times. So uh, eventually, UQ will update the information there. Don't worry. So you have to email UQ if you organized your health insurance. Um, I think you would need to update that information when you apply for student visa. So when you apply for student visa, they will be asking for your health insurance policies, but you can certainly um, let UQ know. Uh, 
uh, well, health insurance providers you are with, but um, I don't think that's quite compulsory. It's more so for the, uh, it's more, more for the immigration. If I'm already enrolled and chose course, then there is no step requiring accepting offer. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, probably just pay your fees. That's pretty much it. Which SIM card works best at UQ and where can I get it? Uh, yeah, most of the SIM cards got really good signals. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, if you want, just go with the big brands, Telstra, Optus. Um, is there still Vodafone? I'm not sure. Sorry, <laughs> I haven't been in the market for a little while. Um, but yeah, I think just go with a big brand if you want. But actually, most of the brands are pretty good. Even some of the smaller brands, they, they're actually using the like Optus and Telstra line. So they use, share the same signal. And, and at UQ, you get free Wi-Fi anyway. So you yeah, you're covered. You'll be okay. Don't worry. Where you can get it, you can pretty much get it any, anywhere. Once you get off the plane, um, there will be uh, stores in the airport actually selling SIM cards. So you can approach them and get one. Yeah, simple. Cool, wow, we've done it. We've answered uh, nearly 300 questions. That was a milestone, guys. Okay, a few more. <laughs> I like I like you guys, I'm really passionate about coming to UQ, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Okay, so for a student card, I, I just want to prepare the photo before I go. Do they have any ask for photo, like background colors, hairstyles, the size? Uh, look, uh, as long as it's decent, <laughs> as long as it's, uh, it's written, they actually do tell you a little bit restrict, um, requirements um, when you upload the photos. They will give you a little bit of instructions there, yeah. But um, yeah, mo most photos will be okay. It's not it's not passport photos. Don't worry. or or it's, you're not applying for passport, so don't worry. Just student ID, you'll be okay. All right. Well, it's actually almost two hours. We uh, yeah, it's it's amazing, and we have still got quite a lot of students online with us. So thank you, thank you for hang hanging out on, on this beautiful Saturday afternoon with us. Um, and I hope that uh, some of you would enjoy the rest of your times. It's It's been really amazing to see so many of you are showing a lot of interest and we're really, really keen and can't wait to actually see you uh, on campus. So we're probably going to wrap up here. Um, thanks, everyone. On behalf of uh, UQ team, uh, my colleagues, Andrew, um, Angela, um, Michelle, Yajani, and Mackie, we thank you for showing us. And again, uh, we wish you all the best and can't wait to see you on campus. Um, and a good morning, good afternoon, and good evening all from all of us. So take care. I'm going to finish it here. If you have any more questions, feel free to uh, email us or contact us and uh, have, have a wonderful evening ahead. Take care. See you guys.